Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. My childhood family was a singing family, as was the family in which my children grew. A song would often accompany our evening devotion. My earliest memories are singing with my mother, my older sister, and my younger brother. Very often, that song with our evening devotion would be Children of the Heavenly Father. Perhaps after Jesus Loves Me, that was the first song that I committed to memory. And it makes sense. A song about a father in heaven who cares for his children. And when you're three and four years old, you don't realize that those children could be of any age. I don't care how old you are in this room today, you are a child of the Heavenly Father. The first stanza of the song is inspired by our gospel, verse for the, our gospel verses for this day. Jesus says that the creation, the birds and the flowers are cared for by a loving Father. How much more will God's children receive God's care and love? The song says that, that God's children are gathered unto the bosom of the Father, that even birds and stars have not received that kind of comforting refuge. That is a powerful image for me. Even as I am entering my seventh decade of life, this image of a God who gathers his children unto his bosom. That Father knows what we need. Children of our Heavenly Father A Bethel mother tells of her prayers for her six-year-old daughter's eyesight. The sight in one eye hadn't gotten so bad that the doctor said that she should wear a patch over that eye in order to strengthen it. Because of the difficulties with her eyesight, she fell behind in her reading. The mother tells of months and months of praying for her beloved daughter. This last week, God's care for his little children came to light in a new way in a doctor's office. The doctor told this little girl that her eyesight had improved dramatically, even to the point that the eye patch could be removed. Alleluia. And the mother and daughter went home that night, went to those books that had been giving her so much trouble over the previous months, and she read every one perfectly. The disbelieving mother complimented her daughter, and she responded, I get reading now. It's so easy. I know all the words. Well, God knows all the words. God knows, even before an earthly father or mother, what each of us need. I wish that I could say that every child with eyesight problems would have their sight restored and that every child afflicted with disease could be healed. We know that not to be the case. However, we know this important truth as well. God cannot, God will not ever abandon his children. God bears those children no matter their age in his mighty arms. God, his own dark, tender, and nourished, in his holy courts they flourish, from all evil things he spares them, in his mighty arms he bears them. 
God knows. God just knows. Jesus illustrates God's care for his children through God's care of creation. Pastor Anjanette's father, Roger Boer, is a master gardener. I had no idea when I wrote this sermon that Pastor Roger Boer would be right over here this morning with his wife, Gail. I saw them just during the prelude. Do you want to wave? Yeah, thanks, Roger and Gail, for being here. Yeah, you can clap for them. They produced a, a beautiful daughter. Roger uh, has cared for flowers far longer than the 32 years that I have known him, far longer than I have known his daughter, Pastor Anjanette. I recall visiting his church and his home uh, one day, and he proudly showed me many of his flowers. But the pride, I know, Roger, the pride was not in his own care of the flowers. The pride was in a God who could create the flower. How does a red rose know to be red? How does a lily know to spread its petals in the form of a trumpet? How does a tulip know to peek its nose through the still cold ground in the spring? God knows because it is God who clothes the flower. And if God clothes the flower and the grass, how much more will God clothe his children? God knows. God just knows. Birds, you know, don't fill semi-trailer trucks with food, sending them to grocery stores to nearly every town in the land, yet somehow birds find something to eat. Have you ever wondered how a deer a relatively large mammal finds things to eat without a high V. But somehow, God cares. God even knows all of our sorrows. As we pour out our sorrows to God, it is like a little child pouring out information to a loving parent who already knows what the child is going to say but it is an important time between that parent and child. Tell your sorrows to God. He knows. And he will provide the grace to see you through. Neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever unto And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life, Jesus asks in our reading from Matthew. Now, that is not to say that, that we can do whatever we want and that God will somehow miraculously save us from our foolishness. If you choose regularly to drive 80 miles an hour the wrong way down a freeway, I don't think even God is going to give you many chances at longevity. But worry? Uh, why worry? Will, will worry make people love us more? Will worry make our clothes fit better or fill our refrigerator? Now, God has given us brains with which we can prudently plan, but worry is incompatible with a loving father who cares for his children. I'm going to suspect like many of the children, maybe all of the children who were gathered here minutes ago, when you were three or four years old, you didn't really worry a great deal about what your next meal was going to be or where it was coming from. You simply trusted that someone who loves you was going to care for you and feed you. There is someone who loves you who is feeding you right now with a message of care, with a message of love and grace. It is God's singular purpose to bring his children home 
to him. It is God's love that preserves us this day, every day, unto eternal life. Though he giveth or he taketh, God his children ne'er forsaketh, is the loving purpose only to preserve. So this is a song that I learned as a young boy. It is a song that I commend to you. If you have small children, teach it to them. If you have no small children at home or if you've never had children, learn it for yourself. You will come better to know a loving God who cares for you, who will never let you go who bears you in his mighty arms. I loved this song as a kid. I love it today. It will be sung at my funeral. <laughs> From all evil things he spares them, in his mighty arms he bears them. Amen. Please rise and sing. <laughs> 